Hey everyone, this is Cat Wondering Soup, and today we are giving you another vlog um, and blog actually, um, and continuing our informational, quick informational post about moving abroad from the United States of America. Our other vlogs uh, and blogs were based on Thailand and Vietnam, and this week's is going to be centered on the country of Taiwan. These vlogs and blogs are all quick, uh, concise information. It's not for individual individualized use, uh, but it is some information to get you started on your journey. And maybe point you in the direction that you may want to go in. So please take it with that in mind. Information does change. Please do your own research before you move abroad. Uh, these blogs and vlogs cover land ownership, business ownership, citizenship, education, medical care, LGBTQI rights, and for this particular blog, we're also going to get into cost of living. And I'll explain why as we get to that point, because I didn't get into cost of living in Thailand or Vietnam. Let's first start out with land. Land ownership. Uh, in a nutshell, you can own land in Taiwan. There are rules. You can only purchase land for personal usage. I mean, you want to buy land to build a house on, social welfare purposes, an investment. But you can't, and when I say investment, there's a little bit gray area there. Like you can't buy land for profit, meaning you can't go in and buy a whole huge swath of land and then sell it. Think you're going to make money. You, you can't do that. Uh, and you can only buy land in Taiwan also if... A Taiwanese national can buy land in your country that you came from. So if you're coming from America and a person from Taiwan can move to America and purchase land there, then you can also purchase land in Taiwan. Just that simple. Business ownership. You can also own a business in Taiwan. Uh, it's possible. And the process is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. A lot of uh, websites out there um, that will take you down that pathway. So if you decide to move there, and you want to stay there in that sense and own a business, it can be done. There's some legalities, some money you're going to have to spend, just like you would in the United States, but it definitely can be done. Next up is citizenship. So, you can definitely achieve citizenship in Taiwan. You can actually have dual citizenship. Dual citizenship is not recognized in the U.S., but you can still have it in Taiwan. Uh, now, to get citizenship, you have to apply for an Alien Permanent Resident Certificate. To get that, you have to have lived in, the, in Taiwan for uh, five years. And of those five years, each year you would have to spend 183 days in country. If you went to school there, let's say you went to college for two, three years, it won't count. You actually have to be living and working in Taiwan. And that's how you attain citizenship. Okay, we're going to move on real quickly to medical care. So they have universal health care there. Um, and you have to have it. You have to pay for it. You have to sign up for it. Uh, if you stay there for more than four months. They also have private hospitals. Pay a little more. You get private care. Um, both are on the scale of Western medical care. It's just cheaper. So I don't think you're going to have any problems in Taiwan when it comes to medical. Education. Now this one, we really are leaning toward those who have kids and they're bringing them with them. Uh, there are public schools there. English is not at all, or there aren't any English-based public schools there. So unless your kid is bilingual or picks up languages pretty easily, you're more than likely going to put them in an international school, which is going to cost you money. Unless you homeschool, which is always an option. Just um, do which one's best for your kid. I will say that the research that I did on Taiwan indicates that schools are different than the ones in America in the sense that they're uh, very focused on education and rote work, meaning um, books are going to be given, learn, 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 learn. It's not giving you room to breathe a little bit. There's not much room for creativity. They're very talented in math and sciences, so... so. Again, international schools will probably be the best bet for you unless your kid, again, is bilingual where you can easily pick up languages. And saying that, 
there is generally a wait to get into the schools because of that. So let's say you move in on a Monday and you think that your kid can be in school the next Monday, it won't happen. Keep that in mind. LGBTQI friendly, very. Um, I have an excerpt on the blog that goes into detail about it, but uh, Taiwan is very progressive when it comes to LGBTQI rights. So you shouldn't have a problem there at all. And last but not least, and the one thing again that I did discuss in my other blogs about Vietnam and Thailand, which are known for being relatively inexpensive, Taiwan is not. So Taiwan is not the country you want to go to if you only have $1,000 in your bank account and you have no job. You will not make it there. Keep it in mind with a regular medium-sized city in America, pricing-wise, for housing, food, shelter, things of that nature, clothes, you'll be fine. But if you, again, if you think it's going to be along the cost of, say, Vietnam or Thailand, you're going to be shocked and you're also going to be broke. Um, so go. Have a job. Have some money if you don't have a job. And you should be fine. There are visa fees. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, there's always visa fees uh, to a certain extent. So just do your research on visas and how, how you can get into the country just to even visit. But again, that is Taiwan in a nutshell. I am Kat with Wandering Soup. Thanks for tuning in. I'm not sure where we're going to go next week. If you have any suggestions or thoughts on what country you'd like me to investigate next, Feel free to leave it in the comments. Send me a message. We're at wanderingsoup.com. That's www.wanderingsoup.com. And you can find us on YouTube, of course, The Wandering Soup. Again, this is Kat. Peace and love, y'all.